Praise the Lord. In the book of Matthew, chapter 5, beginning in verse 17, it is written. Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17. It is written. Think not that I'm come to destroy the law or the prophets. I'm not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth shall pass, one jot or one tittle shall no wise pass the law, till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall no case enter in to the kingdom of heaven. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus Christ is the door to the sheepfold. No man can come to the Father except by him. No man can enter to heaven except by the Lord Jesus Christ. And all professing Christians, all that profess to be born again, will profess from John chapter 3. As the Lord Jesus Christ says in John chapter 3, verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Professing Christians will all confess that in order to enter into the kingdom of God, you must be born again. John chapter 3, verse 5, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except the man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. John chapter 3, verse 7, Marvel not that I said to thee, ye must be born again. Born again Christians, professing Christians around the world, will all confess according to the words of Jesus Christ, that in order to enter into heaven, ye must be born again. However, though most professing Christians will acknowledge John chapter 3, verse 3, verse 5, and verse 7, at the same time, they'll ignore Matthew chapter 5. Jesus Christ says once again, in Matthew chapter 5, the same Jesus Christ who says you must be born again, the same Jesus Christ who is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man come to the Father except by him, he says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 20, for I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter in to the kingdom of heaven. What does it mean to be born again? For we must make sure that we are truly born again so that we can enter to heaven when we die. How many have we met? Professing Christians who claim to be born again are not sure. Are they really born again or not? In their hearts they still have doubt. Are they truly going to go to heaven when they die? I know professing Christians who make a habit of praying the sinner's prayer over and over again. Because they're not sure. Did they truly get born again? Did they pray it the right way? And they'll pray the sinner's prayer over and over again. Back when the Lord led us to Hawaii, I went to many different churches. And those churches that have different evangelists come, and they would preach the gospel from the pulpit of those churches and give an altar call. And we'd see the same people answering the altar call over and over again. Praying the sinner's prayer, making sure they pray it the right way, because though they say they're born again, though they pray the sinner's prayer and answer the altar call, and some of them have done it many times, they're not sure. Are they really born again? You see, many churches, they'll give up the gospel of John. As we
we have witnessed and as we have been given ourselves to give out. And they preach from the Gospel of John, you must be born again. But however, they omit the Gospel of Matthew. As they preach the Gospel and give out the Gospel of John, they forget the Gospel of Matthew as well. Now, giving out the Gospel of John is okay. It is the Word of God, and God's Word shall not return back to void. But we need all of God's Word. When we give somebody a Bible, we want to try to give them the whole Word of God so that you can know you're truly born again. Because if all you have is John chapter 3, where Jesus Christ says you must be born again, then you have the confusion amongst many Christians. Am I really born again or not? In the book of 1 John chapter 3, we can know who's born again and who is not. 1 John chapter 3, beginning in verse 8, it is written, He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he's born of God. Verse 10. In this the children of God are manifest. The Bible says that the children of God are manifest. You can know who is a child of God and who is a child of the devil. In this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil, whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. A person that is born again is manifest. How is he manifest? Because he doth not commit sin. Matthew chapter 5, the Lord Jesus Christ says, in the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, Think not that I'm come to destroy the law or the prophets. I'm not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Verse 20, For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter in to the kingdom of heaven. When a person is truly born again, he is manifest because he doth not commit sin, he fulfills the law. When a person is born again, he is manifest because not only is he righteous, his righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees. And how is that so? Romans chapter 5 tells us what happens when a person is born again. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. When a person is born of God's Spirit, the love of God is shed a brother's heart by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. And in Romans chapter 13, verse 9, it is written, For this, Thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet, and if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in the same, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Matthew chapter 5, in the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, the Lord Jesus Christ says, 
Think not that I've come to destroy the law of the prophets. I have not come to destroy, but to fulfill. And in the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 20, it is written, For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter in to the kingdom of heaven. How is the law of God fulfilled in us that are Christians? And how does our righteousness see that of the scribes and the Pharisees? Because when a person is born again, God's love is shed abroad in his heart. And if we walk in that love, we fulfill the law. For all the commandments of God are briefly comprehend this one saying, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. In this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. He that doeth not righteousness, not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. In the book of 1 John chapter 5, verse 13, it is written. 1 John chapter 5, verse 13. Sorry about that. First John chapter 3, verse 14 is written. First John chapter 3, verse 14. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Are you born again? Are you manifest as a child of God by righteousness? Does your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees? Is the law and the prophets fulfilled in you? Has God's love been shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost which is given to us? Do you love your neighbor as yourself? Do you know you pass from death into life because you love the brethren? He that loveth not his brother abideth in do you know that you're born again? And not only do you know you're born again, do those around you know that you're born again? Are you manifest as a child of God? Because you have God's love in your heart. Because you know you pass through death and life because you love the brethren. Because God's love has been shed upon your heart by the Holy Ghost which is given to you. And that when you love your neighbors yourself, you fulfill the law are you born again? You know who is born again or not because a child of God is manifest and a child of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. This past week, your mommy, my wife, was at our building, the condominium that we're staying at, we're rent a small humble room, and she was talking to a landlord who was a Chinese-born woman who is now a Thai citizen. And according to their Thai beliefs, they believe that Westerners are all Christians. Therefore, this landlord, who is a Thai Chinese woman, who is not yet a Christian, who we rent our room from, and we continue to be a witness unto Christ to her, we continue to pray for her. We continue to preach God's word to her. We continue to preach the gospel to her. When she was talking about another Western man, who obviously was not a Christian by the way he looks and by the way he acts, your mommy, my wife, let her know that that man is not a Christian. You see, because of a Thai belief, they think that all Westerners are Christians. And that all Asians and Thais are Buddhists. And that's why so many Thai Buddhists reject the gospel of Christ. Because they see the Westerners who come here, who use and abuse the women here, and use and abuse the children here, and they say, well, that's Christians. Well, it's the same as Buddhists. We're all just a bunch of sinners. It's the same thing. And as we preach the gospel to them, they'll say, why do I need to convert? I'm not as bad as those Westerners are who they consider Christians. This is a big reason why here in Bangkok, Thailand, 
that we preach the gospel to Westerners as a witness, not only directly to the Westerners who preach the gospel to, but to the ties that witness it. For when they see us in the red light areas, preaching the gospel to those Westerners who the ties think are Christians, and they see those Westerners get convicted and mad and reject what we're preaching, it witnesses to them that those Westerners, those whoremongers, those drunkards, those sodomites, they're not Christians like that preacher who is preaching it. And because the preacher is preaching it, it's preaching from God's Word, the Bible, and lives differently than those other Westerners, they see a difference. For in this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. By us preaching the gospel to Westerners here in Bangkok, Thailand, as they reject the gospel and come under conviction by the preaching of the gospel, it witnesses to the Thai Buddhists that there is a difference between us and them. The children of God and the children of the devil. And this is a big reason why we preach the gospel in the red light areas here in Thailand, especially in Bangkok, Thailand, as not only as a witness to the Westerners directly, but a witness to the Thai Buddhists as well. And so as my wife, your mommy, was testifying to her landlord at the condominium that we're living in and the small humble room that we rent, and testifying to the certain man she was talking about, who is not a Christian, is not a Christian, a professing Christian overheard what my wife said. And after that landlord left, that professing Christian took my wife aside to rebuke her and to say to her that not all Christians are good. And then she wanted to say that there is even Buddhists who are better than Christians. And there are people of other religions that are better than Christians. And you can't say that that person is bad because he's not a Christian. Because she said she knows people that are Christians. And yet they are bad. This professing Christian, being that she lives in the same building we live in, we know the church that she goes to. And the pastor of that church, I've witnessed before, in the red light areas, going into a bar. As I was preaching the gospel a night many years ago, this certain pastor of that church, who is mixed, half Vietnamese and half Western like myself, was walking into the entrance of the Nana Entertainment Plaza, turned around and saw me as we knew each other in church, was about to say hello to me, and then realized he had just been caught. His face turned bright red. He put his head down and went into that Nana Entertainment Plaza as fast as he could in shame, in conviction, and in sin. And yet, he's a pastor of a church. And this professing Christian who was rebuking my wife last week saying that not all Christians are good and there's some Buddhists who are even better than Christians goes to a church that is pastored by such a hypocrite because they're not born again. They're not going into heaven when they die. What does Jesus Christ say about who's going to heaven when they die? Matthew chapter 5 once again. Jesus Christ the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh to the Father except by him. What does Jesus Christ say about who goes into heaven? Verse 20 of Matthew chapter 5. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter in to the kingdom of heaven. Do you call yourself born again? Do you call yourself a born again Christian? Or are you manifest as a child of God? Does your righteousness exceed that? of the righteousness of those around you. Does your righteousness see that of the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees? If not, Jesus Christ says, 
ye shall in no case enter in to the kingdom of heaven. If you're a professing Christian and claim to be born again, yet there are others of other religions whose righteousness exceeds your own righteousness, you shall in no case enter in to the kingdom of heaven. If you profess that you're a born-again Christian, yet the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees that we see here in the Bible exceeds your righteousness, you shall in no case enter in to the kingdom of heaven. You must be born again. And when a person is born again, he is manifest as a child of God. He doth not commit sin. He fulfills the law and the prophets. As the love of God hath been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us. And when we love our neighbors ourselves, we fulfill the law. We know we have passed from death into life because we love the brethren. So what of these professing Christians? These professing Christians whose righteousness does not exceed that of the scribes and Pharisees. These professing Christians who have no righteousness, who boast that they're not righteous, who boast in their sin and say they're a sinner saved by grace. What about these professing Christians who Christ says shall in no case enter in to the kingdom of heaven? Philippians, in the book of Philippians, Chapter 3, verse 18, once again, the apostle, writing under the inspiration of the ghost, writes, For many walk, of whom I told you often, and now tell you even weeping. Again, this is the same apostle who we find in the book of Acts, in prison, thrust into the inner prison, his feet fast in the stocks, beaten with many stripes and was naked, was praying and praising God in the midnight hour. Again, this is the same apostle who writes in this race of the ghost in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, to rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Again, this is the same apostle who writes in this race of the ghost in everything give thanks 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. And everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Yet this rejoicing, thankful Christian who praised God at the midnight hour, who prayed and praised God while he was naked and beaten in the inner prison, in Philippians chapter 3, verse 18, is now weeping. For many walk of whom I told you often, and now tell you even weeping. What would cause this apostle to weep? That they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is the belly, whose glory is in the shame, who mind earthly things. These professing Christians like the hypocritical pastor I just testified about, as well as the professing Christian that went to rebuke my wife. These professing Christians, the Bible calls the enemy of the cross of Christ. For not only are they going to end the destruction in hell as well, they're the reason why many end up in hell. Why? Because their God is their belly. They mind earthly things. They glory in their shame. They're not born again. Their righteousness does not see that of the scribes and Pharisees. The love of God has not been shut upon their hearts. They do not righteousness. And the Bible says, he that commits sin is of the devil. They love not their brother. Then the Bible says, he that loveth not his brother abideth in death. They're on their way to hell. And because of them, Many are on their way to hell as well. He must be born again. And if you're born again, you'll be manifested that you are a child of God. How? By righteousness. By fulfillment.
fulfilling the law. Your righteous will exceed that of the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If you're born again. A person who is truly born again is manifest as a child of God. And his righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees. He must be born again. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank thee for thy faithfulness, for preserving thy pure words for us, as heaven and earth shall pass away, but thy word shall be forever. Sanctify us by truth, for thy word is truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.